Hey guys, how's it going? Dale here. Today I have a big project here. I have an Acer Nitro 5 uh, gaming laptop. It's got a bad keyboard. I've tried everything. Uh, in fact, the customer even tried to reinstall Windows 11 on it and they kind of messed that all up. And now it's stuck in an automatic repair loop, which is no big deal because when all is said and done, I'm just, they just told me to do a fresh clean install of Windows 11. It has an 8th gen Core i5 processor in it. It's a a515-53 model. I believe it has the it has the GTX 1650, maybe 1660. Can't remember exactly for sure, but that doesn't matter for what we're doing here. Um, I'm going to replace the entire palm rest and keyboard. Can't even get into the BIOS, and when you do go into the BIOS using like an external keyboard plugged in the USB port, you, you can get in there with that. But this keyboard just does not work. The only thing that does work on it is the power button. Then it lights up with the back backlight, the red, and it just stays on forever. That's about it. So I'm 99% sure that the keyboard is bad. And hopefully it's not on the motherboard. Because that's the case, they're probably just going to buy a new one, a new laptop. This is what I have here. This is a replacement keyboard. Exact same one as you can see. Um, minus the stickers, of course. And this one works fine. Nothing wrong with it. I even got this one has the speakers already mounted with the speaker wires already combed through here which is kind of a pain in the butt so that saved me a little bit of time has a lid sensor already installed comes with the touchpad um, so I got to transfer all the guts into this so the first thing I'm going to do is get the bottom off I've already had the bottom off been inside of these nitros a million times but I just use a little plastic spudger tool here these come off really easy this one does have a little uh, little crack in the casing over here on the side. It's just cosmetic. It doesn't really affect anything. You just got to be careful. I got to be careful taking it off so I don't make it worse. <laughs> but if you just run your spudger along the front seam here, got to be careful of the screen. But there's a little seam here I'm, I'm getting into. I'm just going to probably can't see this, but I just need to get it open, guys. Get it open. But these generally come off quite easy, not too much fuss. You want to be careful around the ports, the USB and all that kind of stuff. Excuse me, guys. U UPS is right next door. Oh, jeez, and I opened up the wrong door. Yeah, you did. It's kind of old after a while. People can't see the big giant sign. Oh, you can see how it's how it's broke over here in the corner or on the side right here but again it's just a crack right across here once you screw it back down it's fine you don't even really notice it to be honest with you but I just gotta be careful getting it off here so I don't make it worse uh, so there's that we're done with that for now we'll need that for a little while get out of the way so what I want to do if I can here I'm going to separate the whole bottom here from the lid with the screen. I don't think that's going to be too difficult. I have to take out some screws here for the hinges, lift them up. I've got my Wi-Fi antenna wires. You can know what you can see is I'm going to try not to talk too much doing <laughs> during this guy. I just kind of want to get it done. I did blow out and clean out the fans already. I got in there with a brush and Q-tips. Got out as much of the crud as I can. They see, I know they might still look dirty. They kind of are, but it's just kind of like a film. But all the dust, and the, it's not clogged up. Should get really good airflow. I was conscious of that. Um, but I have to, everything's got to come out of here and go into that new palm rest over there with the keyboard. So um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of Mr. Battery here so we don't have any juice going into our motherboard. That just unplugs right here. I'm just going to pull the connector right back out of the little slot there takes about two seconds so I'm just gonna start taking it apart guys don't really need that a uh, couple of screws here for the keyboard this one, or I'm sorry for the battery Put that over there After you take the battery out, I'm still, it seems that power button does still work on the keyboard. I don't know how much good it's going to do, but I'm going to 
Hopefully this isn't, uh, they got something going on over here. That's glued in there, I hope not. Oh, so there's Mr. Battery out of the way for now. Uh, we've got our CMOS battery, got our lid sensor, touch pad, keyboard, backlight for the keyboard. This goes over to, this connector goes over to our DC jack over here on the side. Got our antenna wires. Um, I'm going to disconnect that. I'm going to get that Wi-Fi card loose there. Before you go any further though, sometimes I forget. I'm going to hit that power button. Drain any extra juice out of there, hopefully. <laughs> So the only thing that works on this thing is the power button to turn it on and of course the backlight other than that it's just stuck can't get it to work in the bios can't get it to work booting up a you know install usb install windows install flash drive can't no keyboard whatsoever so i hope it's not the motherboard and i'm also going to do some repacing on the cpu and the gpu here once i get this out i'm going to disassemble the heat pipes here and i'm going to clean that all up with some alcohol use some Corsair thermal compound, put a fresh coat of thermal compound on there. Some of you guys have asked me to show you how to do that. So this AC jack just pops right out of the little holder over here. That's not rocket science. And let's see, no particular order you have to do this in, but there's a little IO board here. It's got one screw. I'm gonna get that out of the way because that has to go. Flip up the little lever unplug that and that comes right out <clears throat> and if you see here here's the here's the new one it should line back up in there nice he said no particular order but as long as I got it out I'm gonna go ahead and screw that right back in the new one Oop. Line up the little tabs. So we got so we got that out of there. Or in there, out of there. And I want to get these separated here. Uh, I'm gonna leave that connected if I can. That just don't disconnect anything. I don't have to, I guess. Try to avoid unplugging these. Wi-Fi wires. I got a little tool I made to put those back on, but still, my tire old eyes sometimes. They all go nuts with this tape in here. Tape everywhere, holding the stuff in. Don't really need it, but don't care about that. So there's our Wi-Fi card out of the way. Uh, we're gonna go over here in the corner, unplug the. LVDS cable from the motherboard right here it just should lift up gently. Not too much force, hopefully. Oop. Just like that comes off. Alright, so we've got two screws on each side here. Kind of keep all your screws separate. So you kind of know where everything goes. I'll put my hinge screws over there. Now before you start to, again I've already done it, take your phone and take good close-up pictures of the kind of the whole layout here just in case you forget where something goes and you can just refer to that and makes it a lot easier. I haven't done a keyboard like this on a Nitro. I haven't had to. I've done them on lots of other computers. Lots of other computers replacing palm resting keyboards. Some are a real pain, some aren't too bad. So I guess I'll find out if the nitro's bad or not. Gotta get this hinges started here. Oop, crickety crack. I'm hoping I can just slide the lid out and slide this forward, basically, guys. Just gotta kinda watch everything. Ah, these hinges are quite stiff. I'm just hitting there. Oh, I'm just hitting a little plastic thing there. Nothing 
appears to have broke. All right, now the fun part. Said I wasn't gonna talk too much, I guess I lied, sorry. All right, how's that gonna come out of there? I don't wanna have to take that hinge cover off if I don't have to, but yeah, you don't have to. Just gotta get it, fish it out of there. All right, I knew I was gonna struggle with this. All right, Dale. Hinges down a little bit more. All right, so this got to go in and then hinge back. I see how that goes. So this, we're just gonna put carefully off to the side, banging into everything. He said this is a little sensor for the lid. Kind of a clustery mess here, but uh, this is our cable for our, it's got a SATA bay, two and a half inch SATA bay over here. We're gonna leave that connected. Um, I'm gonna disconnect the CPU fan for this one, CPU fan for this one. Just gotta carefully unplug those. Oh shoot, I forgot to turn my phone off. Probably, probably gonna be spam anyway, excuse me. Uh, Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> All right, mute. I usually do these without talking, so. You know what, I'm gonna, I noticed there wasn't, no, I did that or not, but I'm gonna throw a copper heat sink on that one all said and done, because there's nothing on the bottom cover, nothing, no ventilation, no thermal anything, so I'll put a, it's a big amount of copper heat sink on there with the little bands. Make that better. So I'm just gonna go around the board here and I'm gonna disconnect these cables we got here. This is your, now well, the CMOS I can actually leave attached. That's just kinda hanging there. Now this has all gotta come out. I guess I can leave that hooked up there too. <sighs> Get rid of this. These, this slides back towards me. Now on the other one, I even, I disconnected the keyboard cable here from the, from this glue. And I cleaned the connections here with alcohol, cleaned it up really good in case it wasn't making good contact. It didn't look damaged at all or nothing. They don't think there was any liquid spilled in it, but who knows, couldn't say with absolute certainty that was the case Just for the backlight. This is everything we basically got to save. All this we don't really care about. And I can leave that hooked up. This is the speakers over here. With the motherboard, don't need that. I'll leave that. Got to unhook this fan. Come on, get out of there. All right, now I'm going to, this is a big piece of tape over here, kind of sealing this up for airflow or your pipes here. Um, sometimes these come up easy, sometimes they don't. Want to booger it up, but yeah, I'm gonna have to tape that back down when all is said and done. Some heat resistant tape I got. Could just, should just cut that. Yeah, it's gonna look like crap. But that's all right. I'm gonna trim that off. Put some different tape on there. Gotta get that broke loose from <clears throat> the fans here. Those are for fans. See, I'm just basically taking out screws for the moment.
Ew, that's really goobered up in there. That's clean, but look at all this blockage. I don't care about that because the other one's clean as a whistle. I'm gonna take those back and blast those one more time. Um, yeah, I'm gonna get all that crud out of there. So, all right, I'm gonna leave that attached until I get the motherboard out, guys. Set these over here. Just like that. <sighs> I'm gonna leave the RAM in there. I'll leave the SSD in there because that's not attached to anything down there. There's only two or three screws holding the motherboard down, I believe. So we got one back here, a little black one. Remember, that's where the black one goes. The black one. And we got one right over here. Silver screw. And we got one right over here by where the fans were. Oops. <sighs> oh, scared me. All right, there's the computer. Let me get this out of the way. I'm going to pause here real quick, guys. I'm going to go do a little more cleaning on this mess over here, I'll be back in a second. All right, guys, I'm back, I cleaned this off. I cleaned off all that tape that was just covered and stuck up with goo and fuzz and hair and lint and all that stuff. I'm just gonna seal it up with some tape across there when, when all is said and done. But right now I gotta pull the heat sinks off of these CPU and GPU here. So I'm using a number zero Phillips screw. Just be very careful of your motherboard. You don't slip. I'm gonna set these over here. They should all be the same. Never know how hard these are gonna come off. Or what shape the thermal paste compound is gonna be in underneath there. But when I do something like this, I like to re-paste these up, make them look party. screws are all pretty much the same four over here three over here there's another one kind of hidden right here yeah I keep right on going buddy I'm not UPS hi knuckleheads anyway <laughs> sorry all right let's see using a nylon type tool here non-conductive but I want to see Oh, holy smokes. That's actually really clean. And the thermal pads all stayed, stayed nice here too, you can see. It's actually a pretty good job. But we're gonna clean that out on both sides here, on the motherboard and on the copper here, and re-goo it up. Let's see, I got some isopropyl alcohol, alcohol swabs here we'll start with that and see again just be careful but this isn't real complicated guys get off what I can here this alcohol usually does a pretty good job getting up the die here but it likes to flake kind of go everywhere Just thermal compounds, well, it's not gonna hurt if it ends up somewhere you don't want it. Get it nice and shiny. If you get a little overhanging on the edges there, you can't get it off, you don't wanna get down in there too hard and booger up anything, but it's not gonna hurt. 
like I said, it likes to kind of flaky flake. I can usually get it pretty good just by using what I'm using here. So I got Q-tips over here if I really need it, but I don't think I'm going to need it. Get my finger along there. Get up there. There we go. Make it look all pretty and shiny. thermal paste don't go too nuts with it guys this one was like I said actually pretty good shape a little dried out but not too bad oops shoot all right what I do with that now we're gonna go over here and clean off our copper here best we can got around there I can help it just clean the best you can without boogering up these little pads around the perimeter here it should be adequate got all these wires that gizmos attached here so we're going to just go ahead and basically put that back in place here in just a moment so that thermal paste likes to when it flakes off gets everywhere in your hands and, and clothes not, a, not a easy to get out actually either a little flakes foot on the motherboard is not going to hurt anything so very small amount here Very small amount. Oh shoot, it's probably too much. I've done better. <laughs> kind of went nuts all on me. dab it in the center like that and once you put this back in place you don't want to be moving around too much if you can help it lay it back down there screw it back down nice and firm and that'll take care of that ah nothing like a fresh coat of thermal paste Excuse my sniffles at uh, that time of year. Time I look out my big giant front window out there, it's bright blue sunny sky out there on the white glistening snow. It blinds me for a second and then it takes <laughs> forever for my eyes to readjust. Stop doing that or wear shades inside, I guess. Front windows aren't tinted, just normal commercial plate glass I guess you would call it but it's bright 
Just snug these down, not super duper tight. So those thermal pads are in really good shape, so I'm not worried about those. They should be fine. Catching that. So we got our three here, our four back in here. Freshly pasted, that'll work good. Don't worry about heating issues. All right, so let's get this out the way for a minute. Uh, get our new one over here. Yeah, I cleaned the crap out of those the best I could. They look, like I said, they're not clogged up. The, the fins deep down inside, there's no way to get in there. But I don't have a, whatchamacallit, cleaner. So anyway. get this generally in place careful not to slide it around if you can help it guys get all my little cables out of here oh this one's had one on there already trade I didn't need this I forgot it came with that but now I got a spare just in case for the lid sensor and for our keyboard backlight that looks good should just kind of fall into place, sort of. <laughs> speaker wire out of there. Oh, I always want to make sure these are in place. And it sucks I haven't taken back out. Hmm. Looks like when they took this. Yeah, I guess it's all right. So this is the, obviously this is the new one here. All right guys, let me. All right guys, I had to take a little break there. Sniffles were, sniffles were getting the best of me. Anyway, um, forgot to turn the camera back on. I put the AC charging port, ran it back over here. No big deal there. Uh, but anyway, and I went ahead and I put a co copper little heat sink with some bands on top of the thermal pad there to give it a little better heat dissipation there. It should fit in there okay. It's pretty extremely low profile. Uh, next thing I want to do though is I'm going to screw this motherboard back down here. All right, I had a little brain lapse there on the screws, jeepers. I knew the black one went there to hold the motherboard. There's only three and I just was, kept grabbing the wrong one. I forgot about the Wi-Fi screw over here to hold the Wi-Fi card down. But got one here, and then we got one over here between the two pans. Sorry about that, guy. It's late in the day. I'm just tired. But anyway, anyway story of my life. Um, I'm going to carefully set these fans back in here. And I'm going to plug them in one at a time, though, before I screw them down. In case I have to make some adjustments here. And I keep getting interrupted by customers. Pretty typical. We're gonna get at the right angle here. Shove these back in carefully. There's one. Before I even lay this one in place. And that one slipped right in. There's two. And we got the cable still connected here for our SATA cable. Right here where my little pinky is. And I'm going to plug in the speakers here first though. Try to keep it simple. Everything's just kind of falling back into place here, fortunately. Come on. It's right underneath that stupid... AC adapter cable, <laughs> can't get a hold of it. There. 
speaker connector and then we got this little I.O. board over here with the USB and the audio jack connects back to the motherboard right here he's only going one way just gotta be careful of those little bars don't want to break those that would be a bad day hi hi how you doing good I'm back okay where was I fans had to take care of my customer there guys sorry about that anyway um that's that let's get our fans screwed back down here but anyway i got the screws in for the motherboard the brain part there part of my language Stop looking out there, my eyes. Keepers. All right, so before we go any further, though, I'm going to make sure my cables are up here where I need them, but I'm going to get Mr. Wood here. Be very gentle with it. Oops. Ah. Uh, Try something different here. Hey, it's a little heavier now. Little chunks of thermal paste. Let's see. Yeah, that's what I thought. Anyway. Ah. Okay, wherever that was on that side or that side. Love that thermal paste. Okay, that lines up nicely in that corner. But now I gotta get these Wi-Fi antenna wires in the right spot here. Pretty sure. Ah, I knew that, darn it. Gotta go on the other side. Darn it. Just can't get a hold of that. That black wire is not where it's supposed to be. There it goes. Better. Don't want to pinch those antenna wires there. Obviously. Yay! 
just like that. A little tricky, you just gotta be patient, I guess. Take your time. And now this one's not lining up. Okay, that looks good. Groovy. Ah, da, 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 da. Oh shoot, that was underneath. I gotta pop this back out. I knew I did that prematurely. So many things to lift up and whatever. And this should go underneath there as well. This goes underneath there as well. So charging port goes right there. That was like that. Mr. Hyo board back in here. Come on, there we go. Alright, got that back. Mr. Wi Fi card. So far, the antenna wires have stayed attached nicely. And yeah, that's what the screw is for. Good at. I'm not going to screw this down yet, guys. I'm just looking here to make sure. All right. secure. I don't know if you're careful, I think just about anybody can do this at home if you're careful and use decent tools, I always say in my videos. <clears throat> Makes the job a little easier. Less chance of damaging something. I like to double check. Sometimes I'll put the screw back in the wrong hole, the one that the bottom cover screw goes through. It also helps secure the hinge. Been there, done that. Yeah, you gotta reconnect that LVDS cable back here real quick. These can be a little tricky to line up, so you gotta take your time. Don't fit, don't force it. Let me get um grab some of this real quick. Just going to seal that back on there. That's heat tape, very heat resistant, works really well for stuff like this. Seal that up, we want all that air to go where it's supposed to. cleaned all that off when I had that out so that should be adequate all right so let's just go around here and reattach our cables and hopefully the keyboard's gonna work people keep running into the curb out there it's funny so there's the lid sensor here's the touchpad 
And Mr. Keyboard. I'm not a big fan of these connectors. Every time you slide the cable in, the, the latch kind of goes in with it. So oh, that went pretty good. Can you give it even pressure there? And the backlight. This little guy right here. If you left this unhooked, it's still going to work. Your backlight just won't work. Your motherboard has a connector for a back lit keyboard and you don't have one, which you should if you have any kind of a nitro, but if you didn't, you could do what I just did and buy one with a backlit keyboard. This is just red backlight, not RGB. All right, so we got our fans connected, got Wi-Fi card. We don't care about the SATA connector at this point. So the LVDS cable, we got our SSD with the heat sink on it. Repasted. Speakers that came with it are in very good shape. So yeah, last thing we gotta do is put the battery back in. You can see it wasn't too big of a job. I try not to make it look too hard. <laughs> Get our battery screws here. Number zero and a number one. Most of these work good with a number zero magnetic tip Phillips screwdriver. So once I hook this battery back up or once you reconnect your battery, be careful. Try not to touch stuff you don't have to touch and stuff like that, he said. Uh, I need a middle arm, not a left arm or a right arm. All right, there's the battery. Make sure everything looks good over here, which it does. So now I'm gonna carefully lift it up. Seems to open okay. Ah, uh, shoot, I missed it, where is it? Hey, we got a keyboard. F2 got me right into the BIOS. You can see that, guys. Be very careful. I got to double check my connections, make sure. Oh, yeah. Kind of wobbly without the bottom on it, so I'm just trying to be gentle. But you can see I got into the BIOS okay, which I wasn't able to do before. And now we have that exit save and changes, but it's going to go right into automatic repair. I'm just going to do a clean Windows install on that one terabyte SSD they had over there and um, clean it up. Screens. Kind of yucky, batteries very low, but the keyboard definitely works, awesome. All right, seems like something like that stupid AC adapter. I'll make sure the LVDS cable is secure. Don't want to open it back up. All right, guys, there you go. Ow, that was sharp, whatever it was. Um, anyway. Acer Nitro 5, A515-53, got a whole new palm rest, the keyboard, everything looks like it's going to be okay. Hope you found that entertaining, I appreciate it, don't forget to hit that little bell so you can get notified of new videos, give me a like and a subscribe, I'd really appreciate that. Thanks a lot guys, have a super day.